Welcome, good evening, welcome to the rainy Real Love Guitars workshop and it's getting rainy and it's getting colder so anyway they reckon we're in for a bit of a beast from the old east oh well <laughs> okay um, <clears throat> I was going to run this as a hmm okay I was going to um, put this on the strap and play it, or well, test play it, but it's not kind of got the strap buttons in, and that'd be a bit of a kerfuffle. Um, so well, let's just plug it into wherever it plugs in on the side. We'll probably just reach it without. Yeah, we just don't want it squishing the jack socket. So all round, very nice guitar. This is the Washburn. HP30. Got witches hats for knobs. Nice output. Now this has been sent down by Dave. And um, it's a 335 style guitar in a nice wine red looking cherry colour. Um, and it's kind of everything you'd expect from a semi acoustic guitar. It's in pretty good condition actually. The front is very tidy. There's a couple of little marks on the back, a scratch, old scratches. We might lift out some of these actually with a bit of scratch remover. Let's, we'll give it a try. Um, but overall, it's a nice bound neck, it's, it feels narrow and it feels nice, nice to play. Um, everything about it, acoustically. Acoustically you might play it and enjoy kind of um, jamming and practicing on it. So everything works. So what it's down for is a bit of a setup and also um, fitting a, a Chinese copy of a Bigsby. Yesterday, these uh, nuts, nut slots were pinging quite a lot. Now, having tuned it nicely, um, what you might well find is give all the strings a bit of a tug, um, and before you know it, horribly out of tune. So, this is a classic example of guitar not having had the strings stretched out, and um, it's just a it's just a shame to it's a lost opportunity because if you get the, uh, the the strings stretched out properly and you get the nut slots taken care of so they don't ping uh, you'll get a really nice playing guitar but you'll also <coughs> excuse me you'll also get one that stays in tune as well so look how far out of tune that was work on. Well we're changing the nut out. Yeah, so we're going to change the nut out for an adjustable tusk nut. No, this is all the rage. Oh hello Morris. It's all the rage in the Real Love Guitars worky shop at the moment. So I'm just going to hang this wave up here and um, yeah so it's going to be a Oh, hello. It's going to be the usual precision fret leveling um, and followed by uh, this is the wrong size thing. Stay there. Go there. Hello, mate. Listen, you just let all the cold air in. You 
born in a barn. No, you were born in our bedroom, weren't you, under our duvet cover one Saturday. Four years or a bit ago, five years maybe now, five years ago, wasn't it? And we left your mum in and we came back and she was nowhere to be found. And there was, I kind of went upstairs to change my shirt or something. And lo and behold, she'd buried herself under the top cover of the bed and made a little nest. And then she had these little beauties, all five of them, and he was one. And I, I think he's just such a great little character. He spent some of a bit earlier today sitting on my leg while I was taking a bit of a break and um, watching some TV. And he sat out there, sat there with me, and um, it was like having a hot water bottle on my knee. It was very nice, but I had to get up and do some work eventually. Didn't I, Mr. Morris? Now, there isn't definitely not enough room for you and a wash, Washburn HB30. 35 I'm not sure but um, HB30 semi-acoustic guitar on here so while you're there and there isn't enough room I'll show you what the what came today so we've got the um, Chinese Bigsby style unit and it's it's a little bit crude but there's no reason why it shouldn't work um, I've laid it on it earlier on I mean it's it's badly chromed actually you can see it bubbling under here, but I'm sure it was very cheap. Um, and Dave is, I guess he wants a, wants it fitted to see if he gets on with um, the Bigsby, Bigsby style uh, hardware. Um, these things, there is no solid reason. They're very simple in their operation. Okay, so you, you know, there's there's a lot of mystery about these kinds of things about what can go wrong, what can't. Think about it, this thing is basically an axle, a, re a revolving axle, and it either revolves in a bearing, does it have a bearing? It looks like it has a bearing. So it's got a circlip on the end to stop the whole thing coming out, which you I presume if these little hex keys, you could probably unwind these little things too, but you never know. Anyway, it's designed to just rotate like that. It sits on a spring, and then you hook the strings over there, around, under this bar, and over the bridge. So this um, actually has not got any more or less parts than a standard Bigsby for a massive price difference, of course, which you'd expect. Um, there are, you can take the handle off with a hex key under there, a, hex, a grub screw under there, operated by a hex key. The um, stiffness of the swivel on the handle is adjusted by this, usually, not in this case, but it's usually a sort of nylon nut there, but here it's um, whatever kind of nut it is. The only thing that has me a little bit nervous is the end hole. This, this is, um, I don't know if this one's designed to adequately fit the, uh, should fit the strap button through here, but sometimes, I don't know, it may be slightly off the mark. But anyway, the, the idea about fitting this is going to be um, lining it up with the center line of the guitar. That's the most critical thing. And you can't trust what the guitar tells you or even where the strap button is. So we're going to use the center of the neck as the defining thing. And then we're going to kind of make a line out from that through the bridge because basically the, the bridge, sorry, the stop bar as is currently the bridge and the uh, strings going down the neck. They are the, they are the sort of, they're the, um, they're what's going to define where this sits, not any marks or any sort of um, half, you know, where the wood joins and anything. Sometimes that can be off anyway. Um, the other thing about this unit is it has typically has two ways of attaching. You either, well, two ways. Hang on. There are two approaches to it. You can either take the unit like this and you fit. You basically screw the strap, but, strap button in there, which holds it on the end, stops it moving that way, and then you have two screws: one here, one there, which you have to drill holes in the body, and these screws hold it from moving around. Now the thing to I suppose to bear in mind here is that these things, the strings are always pulling that way, right? So they're not pulling up this way. There's no chance this is gonna flip up. So you don't, you have to watch out that you don't over tighten these um, because especially if they're standing on the little feet, they're going to be, um, you know, you don't wanna put pressure on either buckle the top of the guitar upwards because you, you probably have a little gap between the felt pads, which they haven't got any, but we'll have to put some in. Um, and, and so you don't want to kind of, you don't want to have this thing sitting on a felt pad and then directly behind it, squish it right down so this buckles. 
because um, there's a chance that any kind of buckling or distortion of this piece um, will affect the operation of this. So just try, if you come to fit one of these, just bear in mind that these, that hole and that hole, they are more about um, directional stability than they are about holding anything down, so you don't need force. So we're going to tighten them up, we're going to drill a pilot hole and we're going to sink screws in here, the sp supplied ones I guess, um, but when we screw it in we're going to make sure that it just holds it comfortably but not tries to ram it down onto the top of the guitar. Um, you, you're with me on that one Morris, uh, it comes with its bits and bobs and a spring. Um, I'll just put it down here for the time being because I'm going to do that last of all. What I want to do is a setup in the easiest configuration. Now you might say, well, you've got to reset it. Well, you don't have to reset it when you put the tremolo because the tremolo is behind the bridge. Ah, we have another bridge as well that came in the post. I can dig out where it is. Now, now that's a headpiece for next next headless guitar. Somewhere over the window is the headless. No, it's the roller bridge that came with this, and it's not my favourite kind. Uh, a little bit hard to adjust in terms of intonation, a bit of a fiddle. But we'll get there, and it won't be doing more than once. So that's also an important part of our equipment for this setup. And here is the Tusk adjustable nut, which um, I think makes a really great... Uh, makes tuning very much more reliable. Um, and actually makes my job quite a bit easier so I don't have to try and cut the slots to a given fixed height. Uh, I need to make sure they're all consistent with each other and sometimes the, even these tusk nuts do require a little bit of um, slot adjustment but it's tiny compared to trying to dig down to a given say 0 0.4 whatever I'm looking for millimeters and um, playing action over the first fret. So um, so these, these, I'm buying these at about 14 quid including postage, so I charge £20 to fit one of these because what I have to make is either a resin base for it or um, more often than not I make a, uh, what's the word, a milliput base for it and I think I'll need to make a milliput base for this one, it'll, um, it'll take overnight to set uh, and then I'll shape it tomorrow, but in the meantime the setup part, uh, I can do all the setup work with the original nut in, the original strings as sacrificial strings, and the original stop bar and bridge. Because the purpose of this setup part now is to make the make sure the frets are levelled for the kind of action that I'm going to set, and that kind of action will be the same uh, once I've refitted or once I've fitted the vibromate. No, not the vibromate, the vibrato thing tremolo arm, uh, and also once I've replaced the nut, it'll still be the same kind of action. Um, I was going to say that with those cheap or any kind of vibratos, there's one way of fixing it, where you put it directly into the body of the guitar. Um, I'm just checking tonight via email that um, Chris, uh, sorry Dave, Chris, Dave knows that that's what has to happen. Um, blimey, bits of your mane coming off fella. Yeah, I'm just checking by email that he's aware that, that this, this unit attaches by directly drilling into this nice wood of the guitar. The other version is something called, a, uh, you fit an adapter called a Vibromate, and that is a sort of plate that goes, uh, it attaches to your existing stop bar post, um, but it pushes, it gives you a kind of footing for this unit so that you can screw the screws into the Vibromate plate, um, which theoretically stops you having to drill. Now I fitted one of those a while back to Paul's um, Black Beauty, uh, which he subsequently took off actually because he, he wasn't too keen on it, he preferred the original, uh, preferred the subsequent Duesenberg Les Trem thing. Anyway, so Mr. I'm going to need to sort of get you to, oh, get you to sit down a bit. Hey come on, I know you're, you're loving the attention and all that but can I put you down by the radiator so you can get a bit warm and I'm getting rid of some of these knots too in your rough, you princely character. You've got some building up. By the end of the winter he's usually got a few dreadlocks that need to be taken out. Come on then. <laughs> Come on. He doesn't like being picked up actually. Come on then. There you go. Down by the radiator. Look how nice it is down there. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Okay, so my first challenge is, um, is to just get a feel, first of all, for how this thing plays um, and, and set the kind of action that I would like it to have. And just check out straight away um, whether it's got any issues with the frets. I'm not sure it has. I've got quite a good feeling about this. It's got quite a nice... Uh, I don't, know, I don't know what the factory was called. What was the factory called? It wasn't Fuji, Fuji Gen. It was one of these Korean factories where they made Ibanez things. And this is very like a, an 80s Ibanez uh, bridge. It's kind of squarer and a bit deeper in the travel. Um, it's a shame to lose it in a way because it is quite characteristic of this manufacturer where this was made. So I immediately. I've lost my plectrum. Brilliantly done. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to check the action here. Now this is actually um, not too bad, but let's drop it down a little bit. It's quite a, st a stiff little device. If you find it stiff, it's good to get two hands on it because that screwdriver can spin around and this is about 1.5 so a tiny bit down on this so the actual playing action on this won't be a massive difference now we use the tuner thing here and let's just see how it how it gets on now this may be and i have no prejudgment of this but let's this this for all i know this could be one of the one percent of guitars that doesn't need fret leveling but, and if it is, then it makes this part of the job quicker and cheaper for Dave. That's sweet. That is sweet. Uh, what did I do with Electron? Morris, what have you done with it? That's mad. <coughs> I have quite literally disappeared it. It's grey, but it has vanished. Okay, enough of that. So, so down here at this end, let's look at what we've got. Let's check what we've got in terms of the neck relief at the moment. That's quite a lot, actually. That will allow this to play quite easily at a lowish action because it's creating a bit of space in the middle here. Um, but let's say um, the, the thing about having that much action relief in the middle um, is it's about it's about 0.6 of a mil, something like that. It's quite a lot. Um, that makes the middle part feel a lot higher an action than it really is. Um, so we can make an adjustment to this and flatten it out, assuming um, to begin with that the the uh, truss rod adjuster works. So the first thing we're going to do is find out about that and do it by, I don't know, this habit of leaving birds' nests of string up there is not one of my favourite things. But anyway, let's, let's take off the truss rod cover. It's an HB30. I don't know why I was thinking 35. Maybe there is with a 35, but hey. We'll take off the cover and we'll, we'll get a, a bit of an adjustment in there. Now at the moment, the nut that's on here isn't doing too badly. There is a bit of pinging, so it is pinching the strings a little bit, which altogether will make the tuning, will slightly adversely affect the tuning um, efficiency. It's not the end of the world. Um, in other words, you're still, it's, it's, it's at the sort of level that it will give you a reasonable tuning stability, but not brilliant. So I'm just going to tidy this up for a minute because I don't like living with all this stuff sticking off here. Um, so I'm going to adjust, make an adjustment to... Are you staying there, Morris? Very good. Let's put this in here. Um, yeah, I'm going to make a, an adjustment now, and it's, it's going to be fairly straightforward. And we'll see, as a sort of first test really, is our, our aim is to, is to see uh, how much 
oh, so I hope, check first and foremost that there's some movement in the uh, truss rod. So if it's curved, we want to straighten it, or if it's too relieved, which it is, I want to straighten this out by tightening up the uh, truss rod. And to do that, I want to go clockwise, um, but I need to get the right size tax key for this particular adjuster. And they're all different, and this is a, a five millimeters. Now you can hear it sort of making a, an angry noise there, but it's, it's turning quite positively and freely. Um, now, some guitars this happens instantly, some guitars it takes a few minutes to make any impact. Um, and so I'll kind of take a look. And the positive thing is if, you, if it is a quick acting neck, you'll see the, uh, the difference straight away. Um, it's a little bit reduced, but not much. I'll do a bit more. So we're straightening the neck by counteracting the pull of the strings by turning, tightening the truss rod. Now looking at the the um, frets as I go, a bit of kind of quick detective work, these frets are quite flattened. Um, they've been worked on before, sometime in their past, so it may be positive from perspective of fret level. So this will have changed the tuning, so that adjustment has sent some of the notes out. That's just dropped flat because there's still loads of give in these strings. See, some people put the strings on, give them a bit of a pull, and then, uh, and that's not very, by the way, you heard that suddenly tuned up there because it's getting caught in the nut. But some people put the strings on, tune it up, stretch it uh, a couple of times, and then I think it should stay stable, we'll leave it overnight and then come back and play it and it keeps going out of tune and it, and it can be very slight but it can be really frustrating because it just stops it being enjoyable to play. Um, so we really want to get that sorted out and of course we will do that by the application of this thing here. Now I'm not going to put it on yet because I'm going to do the make the bass uh, overnight but what I will do is um, shall we change the shall we ch yeah let's uh, tell you what Let's, before we do any more, let's, let's change the bridge over right now because we're going to be that's going to be a feature of the, the future one. And actually, to make things easier, it might be a good idea to intonate it now. We can probably get it very close. And the reason I'm thinking of that is it's, it's a bit of an on off, on off, take the strings on, try to take them off business. Um, so I'd rather do that with the old strings rather than a new set of strings sometime tomorrow. Um, when I've done most of the good setup work. Um, I, th I think the other thing about these tuner posts up here as well is they've got too much string wrapped around them. That's another site or potential site for um, kind of building up a, a load of string that can cause a thing to go out of tune because you, as you pull the strings, um, you, they kind of tighten a bit more around the um, post and then bleeds out as detuning so it's not good okay so just while I'm at this I'm gonna just get this bridge off um, uh, Dave's changing this over because it's gonna need a clean behind there but I'll do that once we've done all the setup he's changing this over because um, general conventional wisdom holds that if you're using a um, tremolo, a vibrato, and of course it's a, a different bridge arrangement, isn't it? Um, if you're using a vibrato, you, you definitely want to be, or people say you want to be using a roller um, bridge to help the tuning. Now, honestly, I haven't found it makes too much difference down at this end. The biggest problem is the nut slots, period. That's, the, that's just without a doubt the biggest problem. Now let's just hope this is the same kind of pitch screw as the 
whatever factory it was, did I? Fuji Gen or wherever it was, a nice. That's, that's Japan. What I'm talking about. This is Korea, so it isn't Fuji Gen. But whoever made this in Korea, the Court factory, I think, could have been the answer. But anyway, um, yeah. So people kind of get worried about whether or not it's critical to have a roller bridge at this end. My experience is possibly not, um, because the, the, the strings tend to go over these things pretty well. Um, it's the nut end that's the problem most of the time. So, you know, if you're going to change one thing when you put your vibrato on, change the nut. That would be the, the sort of source of your problems. Now, what we have here with this this bridge is we have a we have a. Allen key adjusted thing and you also have a, a, a double kind of adjuster on basically on this uh, inside this little thing here that holds where the, the posts come through so you can push and pull this bridge this way this way this way this way so you have to, oh, oh, God. Well. you frightened me missus I'm um, so sorry. <laughs> you can push and pull it in different directions is what I'm saying like oh, yes. yeah and um, oh, what are you after in my shed anyway? I'm stealing your tools. Oh yeah. I want a ferrets on the dry wire. Ferrets. Um, okay, do you want, wait a minute, do you want, there's one. And um, what size in, in the bit? Is it Phillips no, or is it a posi drive? I don't know. What is it for? It's to, of your it's to thing. unscrew okay. Okay. Look, the old wardrobe. I'll give you two, I'll give you two. Look. And I need a flat one. Okay. Mm -hmm. This way Flat one. Platform that one here. Oh, actually, why not take it as bits? Right. So look, you've got. If it's got a star, sorry, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. If it's got a star on the screw. Yes, head, I know. Yes. If it's got a star that hasn't. Yes. That's a Phillips. No, yeah. if it's got a little lines in between. Yeah. It's this blue one. Otherwise, it's this yes. grey one. Yes. So hold those two. And then, Thanks. and then I've also got a department of. <laughs> Somewhere I've got the department of the other ones. I think it's only two different kinds. Um, you said you want a Phillips, a yeah, flat one. Yeah. Um, and, and the other thing I'm going to need is, is, is the electric one. Why? Because it says so. Just oh, because you're con you're construct you're in. I'm just constru following the rules. Your construction. Right? And the rules say that. But I need, need my electric one. Well. We're only unboxing things. You, you don't need an electric, you can do it by hand. Oh right, that's all right then, isn't it? <laughs> you don't need oh, one, you can God. do it by hand oh, too. Bring it back. No. Anyway, you're a fine one to talk. I've got one in there. I've got, I've got all my tools in here, magically. <laughs> How um, did that happen? If you're going to undo you, things, huh? press it in hard huh? as you undo it. Remember How that trick? Remember that? Trick? Yes, press it harder. As, you, as you're pulling it out, press <laughs> it in. True. As you're pulling it out, press it in. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? Otherwise, it will spin in the. Yes, dear. <laughs> if you spin it, stop it because you'll be ruining the bits. Right here. Women and DIY. <laughs> Shut up. Well, I've got the tools in my hand. Gillette. Gillette, the best a man can get. Women and tools. Men and their stupid comments. Women. More like. Women, know your tools. I'm joking. Oh. Yeah. I suppose you want my you want my torch now. Lead the way. Oh, who's this? Oh, yummy. Hello. And Morris. Yeah, you've got the twins, right? Thanks. Babysit. Thanks. Call them and they'll come with you, I'm sure. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm presetting. See you in a bit. I'm supposed to be presetting this thing and this is why I hate these. Did I tell you why I hate these? Uh, right. I'm trying I'm trying to preset that's brilliant, that's just so good. I'm trying to preset these saddles on this device here. And they all just drop off then. And the idea is I've got to make I'm going I'm trying to sort of make I'm trying to duplicate the existing pattern of intonation, so I'm sort of trying to look at the centre part of the screw and line it back up. Sorry, the centre part of the bridge post and line this back up and create two 
clusters of three for the correct intonation or the typically the normal intonation. Now this beautifully isn't going to let me do it so I have to take this one out and spin it around providing of course I'm in the right sort of ballpark area for this and it it doesn't work you see it's so limited so technically I can now only get to this place at most I can't go any further because there's only two sets of holes can I go to there I could try locking this down there it may not want to hold it in place doesn't want to go in at all just now anyway so you can see that even to start off by positioning where you think it should go is a pretty frustrating undertaking. So we're supposed to go in two groups of three, and right now I can see already. Sorry. What's the matter? I can see already that this doesn't want to work. Let's try it the other way around. I've got my feet now. What do you want? Um, I need a hex key. What kind? I don't know. You should bring me one of the things you've got to no, tighten up with it. because that means the whole wardrobe. No, there's some loose bits that you're going to stick the hex no, no, key. No, 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 the old wardrobe. Uh, well, got a selection. I have, but it won't necessarily mean anything. You could be there forever with a yeah. massive handful. Well, they're I don't have a, I don't have a neat little kit that goes... Why not? Because I just don't. What's wrong don't. with you? Anybody think this is a DIY shop? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here? Somebody said, huh, if it was... a Guitar tech, I everything know. you needed would be close to hand. Yeah. Well, right, hold on. If you were clever, you wouldn't need a guitar tech. Oh, those clever people. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. That's what, that's what I meant it to, meant it to say. <laughs> so I'm trying to, basically, I'm struggling to try and set up a preset intonation pattern, which, when you try, the first time you try and do it with one of these bridges is when you suddenly realize how limited it is. So you can see now I've had to make a strange adjustment and move the things around. <laughs> strange adjustment. And I've got one, two, three, and then it doesn't really jump far as far forward as it should. Oh god, I do hate this. I'm going to push that forward a bit more. And I'm going to pull this back. I'll we'll do this in a second. Oh such fun. I love these bridges. I thought Don't you tell did. me. Don't tell you. You've said that before many times. And imagine, I mean it's it's a slightly annoying enough to be doing this, but can you just imagine trying to do this with it on there and all the strings running over yes. the top? Yes. Uh, you want trouble in your life. God, that is a bit of a pig's ear still. So that, that, and that. Okay, that's as much as I can even be bothered to do, really. So that's an attempted approximate copy. Now, the one thing I don't know is whether this actually spans the exact gap and fits back on here. Let's hope it does. This is damp. What is? Yep. The towel. It's, no, it's cold. Just, it's just cold. And guess what? Beautiful. It doesn't fit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rocket man. <laughs> that is absolutely top hole. There it's you go. Nice uh, no, it's just a different type of unit and it, it just means these posts are slightly pointing in slightly different directions and the tolerance on this thing is so small that there's no way around it and we're not going to get it on. Oh, brilliant. First problem, crap bridge. Right, you want some hex keys. I think this might be the case. Yep. Uh, hex keys, fairly standard. Yeah. Um, standard. Okay, I'll just take the box. No, because I need them all the time. Fairly standard. Uh, I love how you share your tools, <laughs> resentfully. <laughs> uh, that right, five mils, that's a five mil one, that's a pretty bog standard thing. It would be a big, I imagine. It won't be bigger than that. No, no, no. Try those it, three. I mean, what I'm saying is it would probably be... Try those three, and yeah. then if you don't, if you want to, take those and bring them back when you find the right one, because I'll need them. Thank you. Right, next next question here is that is a crap bridge. I may I may solve this temporarily for Dave by replacing it with my own a new bridge of my own not making but of my own ownership which could just about get him out of jail. Ta da roller. Um, 
However, these things are horrible and they deserve to go in the bin. I didn't say it to begin with when it first arrived, but um, people who know me know that I detest these things. They do look quite cool in one way because they're all shiny, but they're impossible to adjust because you can only adjust them when they're on. When the, um, so you have to take the strings off to adjust them and it's just a pain. So I'm going backwards. Um, what am I doing? No, come on, bring it. I'm going back to the standard fitments and I'm going to see if we have a better chance with this thing, which is also a roller bridge, pretty much of the same quality. It's more of a standard uh, thingy. Now I'm going to put the, what's it, get my words right, I'm going to put the adjuster screws facing back on this and let's see if we've got a fit and actually we, we have a problem anyway with the position of these posts it, it will fit but it's 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 a struggle and that's because these holes are larger okay now you can't really drill these out but you certainly could drill these out um, if i were to drill them out um, then the truth is that's gonna be you know you break it you make me drill it you buy it kind of thing so i think i'm going to hold off that i'm going to put this fellow back on and what i'm going to do is explain this to dave over an email i don't need to change the bridge right now anyway so i'm going to go back to the original we'll get it all done up again um, and we'll go ahead with the sort of basic basic the full setup playing action part of things um, and then we'll check in via email whether he wants me to replace it with my roller bridge with a, a drill out of the posts to get them to fit or whether he wants to stick with this original bridge. Um, so, I mean, what we could, we could do is we could keep to the original, get the setup done, then put the tremolo on, fit it, and then operate it and I I will guarantee you that it will stay in tune providing we get the nut right with the new tusk nut and providing that um, we put, stretch all the stretch out the string so I don't think there's going to be a problem and if that's the case as I suspect it will be I think it's better that I don't drill out my own spare and I also think it's better not to replace it because these are universally hated I didn't really want to tell you that Dave but they are loathed and I think this makes the this is much more period correct to the guitar and it would be far better from a resale point of view in the future if you were looking to do that. Okay, now let me just hold hold fire. So I'm going to take advantage of the strings practically being off to mark up the frets. Now they are not tall and they have been quite substantially worked on before so they are quite flat along the top so I'm going to be extremely careful in this setup about the amount of material that I take off and I, I, I suspect it's not that much is going to be required so we may find that most of the work I'm doing here is, um, is going to be re-profiling these actually. It may need a little, I suspect, I can hear it need a little tiny bit of work and there's a couple of chips here on the frets which also needs taking out so the very slightest fret level and then a reprofile so that we get these back as, as close to an arch form as possible um, to make it play well and make the intonation right but this is a, a well played guitar you can see from the, the wear and there's, there's pitting on the wood as well which is kind of a nice sign of having been well played by human fingers, sweaty human fingers as it happens, but rather that than not at all. Now having done all that messing around and having wound the bridge or taken the bridge uh, post out, it's now time to obviously raise them up again to get them back into a playing configuration at the moment where I put them back in flat to the deck. So this is this bridge is actually quite stiff at the best of times. Um, it's quite a tight fit even though the holes on the bridge itself are quite generous um, and accommodating. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the strings once more to get them back onto their posts. 
as much as possible. And obviously trying to do that without breaking them. Because I have a, a, a need for them to stay working um, during the time that I do the fret leveling. Now at this point, having them stay in tune isn't critical. I want them close to pitch, just for the amount of pressure they exert on the neck. So this is a slightly unusual way around for me in that um, I'm going to be replacing possibly the bridge and the nut after doing the fret leveling but that's absolutely fine because I know that both of those aren't going to change the basic levelness of the frets so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry what I'm gonna do next is going to level the frets for uh, this guitar for for any uh, for whichever bridge or nut goes on it but I obviously still have to make sure that the bridge and nut are set to the right playing action when the time comes so I can't assume that's going to stay correct. So I'm just going to back off this a little bit. So we've got the standard 1.5 and 1.2-ish here and that's my sort of starting point. I'll go back to get the pitch. dodgy ones just there. About a few up there. Okay, so we've got a little cluster at the top end that aren't behaving themselves. Um, and that's okay because I'm pretty confident that my approach to fret levelling will take care of those. Okay, so... What I'm going to expect to find at this point <clears throat> is I'm expecting to find that as soon as I start working with the fret levelling file it's going to suddenly show up flat silver spots on these frets as if there's still quite a lot of um, a relative amount of relief in there. Um, could probably give it one more tweak before we do the levelling but it's quite a lot of pressure on the truss rod now so excuse me I need to blow my nose but um So we can we can work with where it is now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my old faithful, very thin truss rod, thin leveling truss rod, and get my little brass bits and pieces out. And I need oh I've just given away my <laughs> my adjuster. Oh no, it's that's fine, it works with this one. That's good. Okay, so here I go. Um, I'm expecting, because the frets are already relatively flat, I'm expecting to see them appear to cut up instantly. And it, if you're new to it, it would be could be fairly um, no, it's the wrong one. It could be fairly unnerving because uh, you might think you're you're taking off too much material. But in this case, I know that they're already flattened by a previous. Uh, attention from a previous tech so so I expect them to cut up and suddenly look 
look like a lot's been taken off very quickly, but I know it isn't me that's done it. And what I'm concentrating on is the material that's, or the, the slight bit of high fret over here. So straight away, I'm seeing them all cut up as expected um, into a sort of flat silver spot. And stopping straight away, what I've got is some interesting diagnostics from my point of view. Um, we've got a lot of cutting there, a little bit here and here, none at all there. So that's low comparative, comparatively to these. That's low, cutting, cutting, low, cutting quite a bit, not at all, not at all, not at all, not at all, not at all. So we've got, and cutting up here too, so we've, diagnostically, it's cutting here, here and here, so it tells me I've got my shape correct to this neck, so I've matched the, the um, tool to the curvature of the neck. But it's telling me that there, there is a cluster of low frets here and a couple of one or two low frets here. And it's those which are which will be making some of the notes not play. Now I know on this end, on the high notes, these actually play okay at the action I've set it to. So I'm just going to put them back in and not take any more than I have to. Now, I could tell you, I could expect this one possibly to buzz, if any. Okay, that's okay. Maybe these three? No. A little bit of fizz there. A little bit there. Okay, that's all playing. Now, I can tell you that from here, these aren't all level, but that's not a problem. We're not, you have to remember with this method, we're not chasing absolute levelness. We're chasing only as much levelling as is required to make the action I've chosen play well. And that means I've left some relative low spots relative to the other frets because they're not interfering with play. Um, if they were, then we'd have a different discussion about it and be looking to take care of it one way or another. So looking at what's cutting up here, we've got a couple of really high ones here. Mm, a little bit now these are starting to touch a little bit which is good and a bit more of these last three which are higher which is kind of what I'm expecting given or well, based on what um, how it's playing down here that's causing some vibration here a little bit there do a tiny bit more on that B track as I would like to call it because there's a hint of something up there um, I'm just going to sort of focus a bit more my attention on this end of the neck and so I'm really just I'm not really pressing exactly but I'm putting a little bit more weight on it at this end just to get that last fraction cleared up there okay so there's hardly any coming off. What, what, what it's revealing pretty quickly is the, the extent of the previous leveling. And that's really good. Now what I'm doing now is I'm recalibrating um, and to make sure that I've still got the right curve as we go across the uh, neck relief. And we do, so it's even. It's not often the case. It usually changes as you go across the radius from one side to the other. You'll, you'll get more or less radius, sorry, more or less relief on one side of the neck than the other. But this means that my tool, tool can stay adjusted the same. And now I'm just gonna do the G track and concentrating again at the top end because I was, I was aware that I was, was starting to get some, a little bit of buzzing, no choking. Um, it's not that bad, but just little bits of buzz at the top end there on the lower notes. Like it. I'm happy with that. So now we move across to the D track. And again, recalibrating. Um, I've got absolutely every confidence this is going to work out nicely and play nicely because it's a, it's a very nice guitar to begin with. It's just about on the point of needing to be adjusted, but it's just still on. So I'm shoving the string out of the way that I'm 
concentrating, whose track I'm concentrating on. And sort of going from side to side, making sure I, I get the whole of the spread of the travel of the string. Because if you like, the, the D track extends a little bit to either side of the center point. Okay. You get a little cluster of lower frets up here, but I'm taking off some of the high stuff right in the last fr three, last three frets, so that. Just that one there. So I'm going to do it again, but really concentrate on that top end. Um, thank you. So it's just about there. And it's be the low fret here that's making the next one high. But uh, and the, the, the sort of remedy is the same. You, you basically have to bring the high one, the next high ones down to try and start to meet the low one. And it's, a, it's the old common, lowest common denominator game, really. It's not ideal because you will see that it's costing fret metal on the last two frets, two or three frets now, in order to accommodate this low fret, which is low for whatever reason. We may not I'll do one more little bit, but we may not get that out. It's a, it is the case sometimes that if you if you've got a fret that's been either hammered in a fraction too far, um, you if occasionally you're faced with a choice of either living with what you've got and accepting that you need a tenth of a millimeter raise on the bridge to just overcome it or if it's significantly bad you have to take another uh, another direction for example pulling the low fret and replacing it see this is just such a case and I don't want to do that, but I have set this deliberately very low, so we're on we're on about 1.2 on the low. So if I pull this out a quarter of a turn, we may find that that pretty much solves it from all, to all intents and purposes. It's not worth for for a tenth of a mil raise here. It's not worth pulling a fret and uh, the comp, you know the subsequent reworking of the other frets you have to do to bring that one back down to the common shared level so it's a it's a judgment call based on you know which, which part of it's really the worst the worst yeah which is worst which is worse i don't know um so and and you know which you choose tends to become a just based on your experience and you have to do it a few times and you kind of get get the feel of which is a better way out um and also over a, a number of times doing this, you, you you have to learn through experience where the point arrives where it is significantly damaged, so that you just have to um, pull a fret or there's something so wrong with it. Uh, now sometimes that can happen by you know something that somebody else has done completely outside of your control. For example, sometimes when people <coughs> get some damage on one or two frets, maybe down here and they go and watch a video on YouTube and it says, well, you get a, a rubber block with some sandpaper and um, you just pile down those frets. Yeah, we've got a, this fret here. is significantly low and I don't know why, but anyway, so Sometimes you know, people will, will attempt to fix some problem with the fret by um, spot leveling it. And before you know it, because it's not, it's not been done in reference to anything else, it's all too easy to end up with um, fixing the damage to the fret so it appears, um, but in doing so creating a low spot which makes the subsequent notes unplayable. Um, and, that, and in a way that looks a bit like what may have happened here. So I'm hitting these last few frets harder now, knowing, first of all, that it's kind of safe to do that because, um, no, it's not going to do it. That's, that's a real, that's a real bad fret. What a shame. I'm 
problem I've got with this is matching, even if I wanted to replace this, this is pretty worn fret metal, so um, finding something that comes anywhere close to this fret from anything I've got is going to be a problem. Um, let's just go through the next, uh, along the next E track and just see where we get at the end of all of this. Now again, you have to, you have to sort of keep your nerve because on this guitar, if you're new to this, you think, oh my god, I have, I have trashed these frets now. They, they all look like they've been cut, or most of them do. Um, and it looks quite flat on some. But remember, they were all flat to begin with. So I haven't done much cutting at all, relatively speaking. So you have to keep your wits about you and kind of work out where you are in the process. So the problem is over on this side, and somebody has hammered this in, this one here, too far down. Um, sometimes, if it was the other way around and you had one standing a mile out, sometimes you can either level it down very carefully or you could try gently tapping it in a little further. I don't do that. My experience tends to show that that produces even more problems because um, how hard you hit it and then before you know it you've got a really low spot and then you're in trouble. Um, but you know, sometimes you can gently tap down using something like uh, an insert from a, a, a fretting call, which is quite a nice, useful way of, convenient way of doing it. Now I'm crossing it over into this other track here and I'm going to try and get these last three frets on the low E down to a point where it just frees that note up. Now it is hitting these last three frets very hard, um, but it's really the only option I've got to make it play. Um, From here, you see, from the midpoint of this fret, it's been it's been absolutely wellied or something. And like I say, there's no way of pulling it out or up. Now we're currently getting that at the action of 1.5, and that's what's that's what's limiting this guitar uh, in the set in a setting of a low action. You know, it's back to simple fact. If you're happy to lose these two, this note here on these two strings or these three strings then we can leave the overall action down. will do um, and that's such a bummer so th there are about the only way after this is to um, is to lower all three of these frets down now in a kind of backward I suppose it, it would be about the only time I would ever consider doing what they call fall away um, which is something that some people end up doing um, using something like this and they would they would take the fret and you can see I've done a fair bit of work on it already with the um, with the uh, with the bar. So it kind of about the only alternative now is to let's put these down a minute. Get these out of the way. Um, now, yeah, so we have a, a kind of an option here, which is to look at these. We know that one's the low one, and these three are relatively high, or high relative to to that one. So we have an opportunity to get these a bit more welly, um, and we can come back with the uh, oops, come back with the um, what do you call it banana file in a minute. I'm sort of tilting backwards deliberately working away from this one <laughs> um, but that's uh, if I can't if that won't make it work then um, what I would suggest it sounds a bit extreme but these frets are kind of worn anyway but this is uh, this is it's what's been done to this before and there's not much we can do
nearly there. Yeah. Kind of almost there. Let's try it on this D track a bit more. I mean, it's not a, it's not my ideal solution, I have to say. We're on the D track. Where's the, there's the D track? It is not what I really want to do. Um, but if we don't have a choice, we don't have a choice, and it it would be a shame for this guitar not to play well. So it's a very rare sight. to see me do that. Now this is this just doesn't want to know. Um, well there's no no real choice but to continue doing it until we get there. I'm gonna hit this a bit harder, see where we can get. Come on, let's do it. somebody do this. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit off this bit here as well. Just to help this. Now, if I, I promise you, I wouldn't be doing this if it was anywhere in here. It's the only reason I'm doing it is it's right on the end. But we are there. Not quite. Horrible, horrible thing. Come on. This is 400 grit, so it's not actually removing that much that quickly. It just, it just feels a bit savage, I have to say. A little bit more. We'll get there. Just uh, as I say, it's a, a brutal, brutal approach, for which I apologise to the gods of guitar teching. But it, those who have done this before will understand why it is. I understand the, uh, the absolute limitations of what we've got to work with here. That's as good as I'm going to get it. I'm afraid the limitations we've got to work with are not fab. So, I'm going to call that as leveled as this guitar is going to get um, without, uh, without chucking the action higher to a point where it won't feel the way you want it to feel. So, yeah, a really rare. I mean, the reason I've done this is because the alternative to this is you really don't have a choice. The, somebody has somebody has knackered those frets to a point where this needs a, a refret to make make it worth investing loads of time on it. And um, you know, it might even be something that when it happens like this, it's usually me that it costs because um, I can go back to Dave now and say, look, this is what I found, and realistically, you know. You're better off spending 175 on a refret as opposed to 100 on the setup. Um, now I've got um, fret material here that I can be doing this with. Um, and, and if Dave, for example, said, "Okay, let's do that," then I lose the time I've just spent 
trying to level this out because see this a pretty crap overall fretboard uh, sorry for a set of frets so but having said that um i i would be quite happy to do that um because it just creates a much better overall result and i i'd be willing to lose the the hour or so spent doing it an hour or two whatever it was yeah, it's one of the things you can't know until you get there um and then i haven't said that you know there is it's not the worst fret life in the world. Uh, it's, it's just kind of a, an either or. Let's, while I'm here, since this next bit won't take hardly any time, let's let's get re reprofile these now to, or recrown them, shall we say, reprofile to um, away from the flat profile. Let's see, this one's still got. This is a low one. Uh, this is the telltale, right? This one right here is low. Um, and tell, I can tell it's low because we've done all this fret leveling it's still got the original ding in the top of the fret so this tells me this is exactly where this bunch here this has fallen on its face or some such thing where it's banged the strings into there and this is being spot repaired by somebody who's I'm going to put crap on the fingerboard now um, it's been spot repaired by somebody who's then ended up wearing the fret down below a useful or a feasible level that's why we've got this problem um, now, uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for something that's fallen down and gone somewhere else. And I still can't remember where it went. The brush. <laughs> yeah. So basically, my detective work tells me that mark there, the fact that it's it not only still showing the original ding, but the fact is this fret level hasn't hasn't affected that ding at all. It tells me that the the ding is at the at the lowest part, still at the lowest part, and that means that somebody's kind of worn away and done a load of work on it, lowered the frets here, but still left a bit of the original damage in. So there you go. Right, let's see just how much flattening these are going to take. Well, a lot basically. So I mean, I say a lot. It's only a couple of minutes work overall, but using this tool, but. Um, Typically, if, if these hadn't had to be leveled so much, they'd be up here by now. So you can, you know, when you have a bit of experience, you can you can just tell how much you've had to level something by how long you have to spend recrowning it or trying to get it back to a an approximately arch-shaped thing. I think we could probably get away with this. Um, but I, I will. I will give Dave the option because if, if he does want to refret it, then to be honest, I don't mind the extra bit of earnings for me. But even though I lose some time on it, I would rather it was coming back feeling like a you know, brand new guitar instead of one that you know is had to be worked stomp, stomped on quite hard to get these last few frets to play. That's quite often the case with this, is it's like a detective job to find out what, what's happened to the, the frets before because they tell a story and, you know, it's usually the low spots that, that contain the story. And when you start to try to work out what could have led to it, it's usually fairly common that some sort of damage on the surface of the frets it has been somebody's had a go at getting rid of it with some sandpaper. Um, and it's, you know, it's possible to do and you can get it to a place where um, compared to when you did the damage, you couldn't play it at all and you can get it back to a playing, a fairly okay playing condition. But it's when someone like me comes to try and set a nice low action, you suddenly hit the limitations of whatever happened to it. So, like I said, this has been... This has not only suffered damage and been badly levelled here, but it's also been levelled all over before. So the frets were pretty flat to begin with. So we're hopefully, at least as well as anything else, we're reshaping them a bit. 
much as possible given the remaining height they have. Because that's usually the, uh, the kind of limiting factor is how tall they are. If they're very tall you've got loads of kind of room to round them off again. And of course all of this is being done without um, without uh, picking up the tops of the frets down any further to accept the relative levelness which we've just achieved. Now I'm seeing that some of these here have been in the past levelled really hard. So, but you know, having said that, it's, it's, it's why this was nearly playing, you know, apart from those up there, the rest of this was playing pretty well. Um, and it, you know, hence I said at the beginning, might, you know, this might be one that I don't need to fret level. But as it turns out, before you know it, you run into the, the sort of former disaster zone at the top there. Okay. Yeah, no, that's workable. It's still, you know, it's still not my most ideal state at this top end, but I think we'll do a we'll do a good polish out. Um, the question is, is I think I think there's enough in there but I you know true to form true to true to my standard principles I will uh, I'll probably stop here now and I will um, I'll take a picture and a couple of things if I can where can I show where the damage is the ding in there um, yeah, I just I'll give I'll give Dave the choice. I prefer to do it that way. So I will stop for now, and uh, I'll get back onto it tomorrow when we've worked out where to go. All right, see you in a bit. Oh, hello there. Well, you can see I've jumped ahead a bit here. Um, Long-winded process. This getting lining up this here. Uh, Chinese vibrato, and it's difficult. A number of reasons, which I'll come to in a minute in more detail. Um, partly <coughs> because uh, everything on the vibrato, by definition, moves. <laughs> so getting a, a good location for it, when in fact you can't actually stick anything down to line it up. Yeah, you can't peg anything down while you're lining it all up. It's very difficult. Anyway, this one I've put some felt pads in different places, double-sided, and I've thinned them down to the, what, the kind of thickness I need. Um, and I obviously used the good old-fashioned masking tape, uh, which has left some glue behind in this case. I don't know why, it doesn't normally happen, but no big deal. I'll take it off um, with some nice solvent. It's basically to protect <coughs> Take the top. Well, I was. This is unusually sticky. Maybe it's maybe it's just a little bit damp. Um, anyway, yeah. So I protect the surface while I was moving that chunk of steel or zinc alloy or whatever it's made of around. Anyway, um, since we last were here, I've polished out the frets. But let's put it fair. Agreed with Dave. That's what we we're going to do. Polish the frets out as is not me for it this time but I wanted to give him the opportunity to give the choice anyway because it would be a shame uh, you know, if he kind of regretted it and wished he'd gone for the refret option this is really pain in the butt <laughs> not very unusual for this to happen actually <clears throat> maybe maybe because it's a bit cold and damp at the moment anyway Despite the hours of fun now I'm going to have trying to remove this stuff with solvent, it will come off. And what I've basically then done is I've, I've marked the middle line of the guitar um, as opposed to marking with, uh, without, without reference to the strap button point. And the strap button point doesn't tie up exactly with the middle of the guitar. <coughs> well, not, it's not far off, it's about... So it's a tiny, tiny bit off. Um, 
So, but what you have to do is obviously you've got to work with what you've got in front of you. So <coughs> even if it did um, tie up to the centre line of the guitar, but this unit, this tremolo unit, um, was not true to that, it's all very well saying, um, well, you know, the guitar's been better engineered than the Chinese tremolos, which may well be the case. Um, if you if you go ahead and sort of put it on that way to the better center line of the guitar then what you're going to get is a, a warped bar and I don't know, I'm putting my own skin off um you get a warped center line on the bar and the, and the result of that will be uh, sorry the tremolo will be uh, skewed and that will cause it to sort of twist and buckle um, and it will be actually difficult to operate and may you know may resist tune returning to tuning and so on and so on <clears throat> so anyway so it's a matter of working the two bits together and it's working with what you've got not what you wish you had really anyway so you can see it lifts this off it just has to be a bit liberally applied um, so what I did was I put the masking tape on I lined up I, I put the unit flush to the back of the guitar because in a way the strongest anchor point in this is the back stop on the guitar so it really needs to be flush to that um, first and foremost and then I marked around that with or I marked made marks with pen on the masking tape as to where the rest of the tremolo would go um, but obviously to make sure that it sat comfortably down the middle line of the neck, which it did on that black line that I drew. So, so it was not a bad kind of compromise. It's, the differences are very tiny when you compromise the two things together. But when you, I suppose compromise here, you know what I mean. When you work the two actual things together versus the two ideal things, you end up with a slight compromise um, and you have to sort of play that by ear as you do it. Um, so anyway, the centre line that I drawn in paper, sorry, drawn down the masking tape was in fact true to the centre line of the neck, which was good. So that was a good start point. So I used that black line then on the masking tape as my um, guideline for lining up the tremolo unit. And once I did that, Placed it on there, drew around it, marked the top two holes, <coughs> but also marked the end holes here. And one of them was a fair bit off the, uh, the existing strap button. I say fair bit, you know, it's millimetre, millimetre or two off. So that meant redoing that, um, which isn't a major problem, but what, what I did was I'm just going to give this a little dust over because it's now getting fingerprinty. Um, yeah, so I, I filled that original strap button hole and left it overnight to dry. And I filled it with resin um, because I didn't have anything set to, I didn't have a, there wasn't a piece of wood of the exact same diameter. And I didn't really want to drill out much, if any, any further at all. So I left it as was and uh, filled it with some, uh, what do they call, you know, those things. What am I talking about? It I filled them with toothpicks. Two toothpicks, or whatever those little sticks are, cocktail sticks. Two of those and a little bit of resin to fill the gap, which I've done and that's set overnight and I um, craft knifed, bladed that back. So what we've got, I'll show you in a second when I've just got rid of the last of the glue. Come on, around these here posts and stuff. Aerobic exercise for the for 
such a lovely rainy day. So you can see that we've got two holes in the top now, which are the anchor points. And reassuringly, they do go into the solid block. I didn't know if it extended that far down because a bit of research online showed me that on a, a Gibson you know, ES335 or something, that, um, that part down here is probably not solid. It seems to end just about there. Anyway, <clears throat> so here's the end piece. And what you see is that there's the original hole there filled. Sorry. Um, and there's two new holes there and a new hole drilled there. Um, a little scuff as well there, which isn't ideal, but it's going to be underneath. Um, the thing. I'll polish it a little bit more with this stuff. Um, so yeah, we're we're uh, we're ready to put it on for its in its permanent home now. It's forever home. Um, and then restring. And I know that Dave wants restring with tens on this, so we'll get those lined up and ready. Um, and then the only thing I think. We did, oh, I can't even remember now. Did we set the intonation already? But we can redo it anyway with the what's it on. There we go. Nice. Lovely, lovely. Right, so with that cleaned off, we're obviously going to lose the stop bar. Well, they're not going to be in use now, so the stop bar is removed. Um, a lot of people leave in the posts. I'll leave them in. For tidiness sake, some people remove them altogether. Now what we've got here is the oldy Chinese device and it's obviously been handled a bit so it's lost, it's not massively shiny in the first place but it's lost, it's a little bit of, let me just clean off. Um, yeah, like I said, the, the, the interesting bit about you doing one of these things is, is that this whole thing moves quite a lot as well. So getting to mark a reliable spot with one of these, um, while everything is free to move, is quite a tricky thing. So we put that in there. These are like uh, tremolo screws. But that was what was supplied. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just before I tighten everything down, I'm going to put in these uh, back screws just to make sure it's all lined up before we tighten it down. Now, what I'm going to need to do is find um, an alternative screw for the strap button because with this plate on, the strap button screw is actually too small now. I'm going to go back to a light torque here. And I want to put this down at not too many torques, not too many pounds. I want it to kind of hold it firm, but I don't want it to squeeze too much. Now, what I do want more than anything now is I want uh, I want this unit to grab it. It's so it's so confusing to the eye, I have to say. The way this works. It, it, somehow when you look at it, when I put the strings on, right, they go to they go to the bridge, fine, but it doesn't feel like it should the way it sits on here. It's just say it's very very odd looking. And I think partly the reason is this damn thing isn't even symmetrical. I'm gonna take a picture of that because it's really confusing. It's not, uh, is that the word? Yeah, it's not symmetrical. Sorry about this turning you off a minute. Yeah, this thing isn't, blimey, is that, the make, is that the nature of the cheapness of it? I have a feeling it is. If you, if you were to look at this, it's not even a semicircle. It's, 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 it's um, yeah, literally asymmetrical. Only slightly, but it's enough to throw, the, throw your eye off. Anyway, um, yeah, so following the center line down, Basically, I'm aiming for the center line of these string positions here. Um, to be honest, I don't really care what 
shape this is behind there, the most important thing is to get the centre line of this. Now, the, the dif difference of it is, is you can, to get that centre line, you can swing around a bit, but if you end up with, because of the construction of this, if you end up with this canted that way because it looks better here, then what you've got is you've got a, a gap like that on the back, and you start to tighten that in. I don't know how you can see. Maybe I'll point. So, the eye feels like this item, judging by the pickups, running back in a straight line, the eye feels like this, that's actually pretty close, but the eye feels like this item wants to be a little bit more like that. Problem is, if you were to do that, what you end up is that down there, and then when you pull that in tight, it, taut, it twists the whole thing. So, in a way, you have to be led by the geometry of this, right? however good or bad this whole arrangement here is. I don't know if you can see, but this is wider here than it is there. It's a kind of like a golden circle-y shape, snail, more of a snail shape. It's not, an, it's not a perfect D. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, and, and it kind of, you look at these things and you go, well, if that's that, you think that should be dead in line with that. And you can see that judging by this, if we go in a straight line, as far as the eye is concerned, um, that feels like the whole thing should be that way. But, like I said, if you turn the whole thing that way, um, you have to move the strap button over by miles and it will twist the thing. It's, it's, it's just a little bit odd. Maybe that's the downside of buying budget Chinese hardware, I have to say. Okay, so, in all of this, uh, we have this, right, we have another screw, but, those screws are, that, that'll do for these two. Um, th that screw's too small, basically, for strap button. So we need to get a better one. So what will go in here will be, uh, where have I put it? A little small red spacer thing. That goes in there like that. Oh, sorry, that goes like that. And then that goes like that. And that's your... Blimey. That is stiff. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we're hoping that a loading of ten strings is going to make that thing sit really nicely down, but yikes. That's, that is quite some maybe I'm just maybe I'm just imagining it, but that feels like a pretty massive loading. For now, I don't know. So just put this safely out of the way. Um Okay, so I'm going to move some of these bits and pieces. Oh, no, wait a minute. I've got, to think. I've got one more thing to do. I have got to find me a screw that's long enough. I could try it with one of these, but I don't think, to be honest, I'm going to put a felt either side. I don't think there's enough grip on this as is. By the time it goes through here, I really don't think, I don't think we've got enough bite. Could be wrong. Let's see. Let's up the torque on these for a minute. Keep this tight. Okay. Actually, you know what? That's okay. It's more better than I thought. And we can go a bit further in with. Let me just check something a minute. So these, am I imagining this? Or these aren't even countersunk? No, they're not. Okay, so that's bizarre. They're not countersunk, nor are the other screws. So even if I used them the other way around, which I wouldn't want to do, uh, the plate isn't countersunk. Okay, so there we have our attachment. Um, without any twisting going on, that's kind of a pretty important part of it. So let me just tap this out of the way for a second. Sure, nothing drops off. We've got the um, tusk nut on there since you last saw it as well. Um, so that's an addition. Put these away. Bizarrely, I didn't quite figure out how these things go back in here. They don't seem to. It's not brilliantly designed to get things in and out. They're too tight. Anyway, I'll have to do for now. Um, over there, black plastic nut, 
bin never will get reused. Okay. Yeah, a bit funny there to have a, a plate with no countersinks and yet be supplied with countersunk counter sunk counter sunk screws. expected to be kind of sunk to work there but hey right so let's get a few of these things out of the way things where they belong just poke myself with something I don't know what it was right and then we'll get onto the stringing part and then that's that that's all it is Okay, that's the tiny one that goes with the lock, uh, the adjustable nut. So we'll keep that one out because we'll need to attach that with the guitar. There's the exceedingly springy spring. Keep that handy. And then bits to throw away. Thank you. Throw away bits. be missing the dustbin more than I hit it these days so this means more tidying up to come later on. Okay well this morning I had a um, another guitar arrived and that was uh, Gareth's what was it it was a a vintage V52 the uh, Telecaster very nice thing too so looking forward to setting that one up. Okay. Right. So just cleared a bit of space. And what I'll do is I'll just brush a bit, a few bits of leftover off and stubs off. I prefer normally to give it a good shake down outside, but I'll get it into the washer, get it clean off. But just right now, it's absolutely Willing it down with rain outside, so let's clean it up. Right, so coming back to the start, we have the joy now of stringing the uh, semi acoustic with tremolo arrangement, and that is a bit fun because you've got what have we got here? So you get this one bit. Yeah, it's a little bit fun because you've got some. We've got some um, bending to do to get the strings around the little tremolo uh, thing. So yeah, it's a funny one. I think, I'd never really thought of this before, but I, I suspect that the budgetness of your trem unit does place quite a lot of constraints on how it sits. Um, you know, that's precision of its construction, I, I guess I mean. Um, Regular slinkies. Um, yeah, so maybe from your, from your monies for buying the full price version, you get a more accurate overall geometry. Um, I'd be interested to look at the design more closely of the, of the um, uh, Bigsby and see whether this thing is actually a, supposed to be a symmetrical thing or not. Um, Really weird. Right, so I need a pliers for this. This is where you can buy little attachment. Various little um, innovations can help you with this kind of tremolo. Um, you can buy a, um, a little plate thing that goes around the goes around the. Um, what am I doing? I'm going. I can't remember where I'm going. Going over there. Yeah, you can buy a little plate that makes loading these things easy. Whereas at the moment I had to bend that and then I have to bend it over there, but more annoyingly, I have to then send it under here, find a way of gripping it, which isn't easy, gripping it and then pulling it through without, without getting the arm stuck in it. But 
How did I manage that? Um, but without all the time, without letting it fall off its little peg holder thing, which I've got at the end there, and then up the end here, and somehow get it all the way through there to load it up. And I don't know how much you can see there, but load it up and wind it on without anything going anywhere. Right, and then I back up one for its worth. Hopefully that won't fall off the end because I've bent it already. And then I'll wind on with my usual one once over the loose and once under the loose string. I won't put it too tight on at the moment because uh, I don't want it to sort of leap over. Okay, so this, this again, it's quite a lot of movement in here, so <clears throat> we'll see where it ends up sitting when all is said and done. Yeah, so I won't put too much pressure on because I don't want the um, adjustable nut pinging off. Now I'm looking at that, and actually what it's telling me is, I think I'm... Uh, have I? I may... No, when I tighten it up, I may have just got it right. Problem with the... Well, not problem. A challenge with putting the adjustable nut in with its milliput base is that you have to... Let's do this this way. You have to... Um, no, you can't really... Can you? Yeah, just a minute. You have to gauge its ideal starting point as you're um, putting it in and you're, you're shaving down the base so you, you've got to you've got to get it in just high enough uh, or sorry low you've got to have a start point that's low enough to allow you to work upwards with the um, micro adjusters or the, the scrub screws and if you if if and i'm hoping it isn't the case but if i've not done it far enough because i sort of tend to do it by experience if i haven't lowered it far enough and otherwise it's starting off too high then unfortunately i have to take it off and um adjust it again from underneath which would be a bit of a, a pain but it's you know it's doable uh, actually you know when it's all under tension i think we'll be we'll be okay so then we sort of spread spread these out to where they should be so you can see it it's um it's actually looking good from here but you wouldn't know that from looking at the kind of shape of the, the unit if you were just if you were just basing it on the on the visuals of that you'd be worried because it it's resisting, it's kind of counterintuitive, but I suspect that's more to do with the slightly gloopy geometry or, or shape of the actual unit itself, thanks to the Chinese makers, than it is to do with the, anything else. But again, it's one of those things about, it's not, none of this is about making the thing look good, all of this is about making sure it, it's not twisted and um, buckling when you attach it because it's a, you know it has to move and it has to do its job and it has to move freely so that's the the overriding priority hey 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 oh I seem to have yeah I seem to have left some blood on there I'll wipe it off afterwards <laughs> Don't you worry, I'll give it a little clean with some uh, nap through as well, it's just on the chrome. I hurt myself on something. Anyway, yeah, so I, I, did, um, I did quite a bit of this preparation stuff last night because uh, I was out here and I was kind of not, not in a, I didn't, have the, I didn't actually have the video card with me, so I was not really in a, oh, I'm going to go back in, stop what I'm doing and get the video card mode, so. Um, apologies for the sort of missing bits, but um, come on, up you come. Oh, uh -huh. it's a, it is a bit of a pain, this. Now, one thing that helps is to get all the holes lined up facing you before you go to push the strings through, because then it gives you a bit of an easier go. So when you're using a Bigsby, um, when you're fitting a Bigsby, you'd be amazed that suddenly these ultra long strings that you think you've got tons of spare on, by the time you get to the D and the G, you don't have a lot of leftover string at the end there. So, you, you know, it, it does, it uses up quite a lot. 
to go that extra length down the back there. Yeah, so the decision um, was taken to work with the existing bridge unless, until and unless it doesn't work, right? So um, the original, or the, the replacement bridge that um, they've sent was this one. And it's actually too narrow spacing uh, for this thing. And I don't know if this is a vintage style thing or whatever, but it's about a millimeter off. Um, that might have been deliberate in the old days, who knows, it might have been quirky to this, this type. Um, but it, it could well be, I suspect it's more that the holes in these were so large that you get a bit of extra wiggle room for your post. So you can, you don't have to be so uh, painstakingly accurate when you drill your bridge post positions. Because anyone who's made guitars will know that locating your bridge post footing positions is especially if you're using a, a wraparound bridge or a, or a standard tunematic type bridge it's incredibly uh, sensitive to positioning um, you know and if, if for example your bridge doesn't have a lot of wiggle room in its in the holes in the bridge to accommodate accommodate the posts then you find that you don't you you don't even have to be off target you can be dead on target with your holes, but if, for example, your post is fraction off center um, of the vertical, then you find that it's lost the leeway or it's lost the room uh, that it needs to get the bridge on. Um, so it's incredibly unforgiving when you're placing a or, or fitting a new, what do you call it? Uh, you know what I'm saying? That bridge, <laughs> uh, tunematic or. A wrap around one piece bridge very very unforgiving so I think these um, this factory the court factory or wherever this this was made I think they um, had a bit of they made bridges which are wider deeper in terms of intonation depth and and chunkier actually all around and I think they permit a bit of they give you a little bit of wiggle room um, because the posts are the, po the holes are a little bit bigger than the posts so you are kind of good but the, the downside is they're not they're not at all accommodating for this new um, bridge so that was a, a basically a no-go um, so we had to kind of cancel that and go back to the original now the question there is is obviously do you must you have is it absolutely essential to have a roller bridge if you're using a tremolo and a lot of people will immediately reflexively say yes um, and my experience is maybe but it's not as important as getting your nut slots right and uh, ensuring your slack is all kind of pulled out of your um, your strings okay so <laughs> well here's an interesting thing um, well, no, actually, it's not that interesting. That's all right. I was going to say this: the spacing of these things. Actually, if I were to measure it, I think these are a little narrower than the spacing on this bridge, anyway. But there we have it. Okay. So now, the first thing I'm going to do is, while we've got this here, I'm going to now replace El Springio. If I can. And this doesn't even sit flat at the moment, but. Oh. That is a mega spring. Um, do I see this pulling all the way down to here? Honestly? No. I think you may find that you're going to need a lighter spring at some point. But Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just over here, try and <laughs> get the old battery going in this horrible old thing. Let's see if we can get somewhere close to tune. Now, this is um, obviously not, it's not a good way of doing it right now.
because you really want to be tuning one by one. But I thought I'd give it a quick go, all in one go to start with. Yeah, so I guess what we've got here is we've got, we've got the strings in line, but we've got this slightly non-symmetrical off-center Chinese unit sitting the way it has to sit, but with its back end, the priority being, th these have to be lined up, but the next priority is this back end sits flush so you don't buckle the plate when you switch it down. So then it sort of makes where the feet sit, where they have to sit to make this unit work. So that's guess what I've been trying to, you know, the point I've been trying to make about this, and it's not fantastic for that to be the case, but we really don't have a choice with this. Um, because you can you could go for the aesthetics and then you'd end up with a buckled plate which may well be completely counterproductive in that you may not get any tuning stability out of it. snip these excess bits off. Um, looking at the first fret action, it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to leave it there as is uh, and play. Now the thing about that is that if it's a tiny bit off I may choose to make a small alteration with the nut files rather than pull the base of this up and um, start sanding it back down again because that involves knocking it out, breaking the uh, breaking the glue seal and so on and so on. I think I would rather adjust these a tiny bit, make a tiny bit of adjustment because these are so sitting so high in the slots anyway. I'd rather make an adjustment here um, to get it exactly right. Um, although you know technically if I'd have taken a few more layers off the bottom then we would have sat under the line and then we would have brought it up with the um, with the what do you call it? A little Allen key, but nevertheless, this seems to work pretty well. Now, I don't know, I'm going to show you this. this is what I mean by is a roller bridge essential. Watch this very carefully. Can you see it pivoting? So, it's kind of got enough play on these interesting. There's enough room in here, or well, you can even see it when I touched it. Maybe that's a bit of a shadow. Um, there's enough play in these little um, between. The size of the hole here in the post to allow it to rock, and that's that's absolutely what you want it to do. Now, if it's not going back to tune right the second, that would be because there's still um, slack in the strings, which uh, I've got to pull out in the sort of time-honoured fashion, i.e., give it a good old stretch, um, which will be pulling it in all, you know, in d every different part of it, hopefully. Um, you know, get all of that slack out wherever it's stored, whether it's in the actual string itself or whether it's in the um, partly in the coils, even of the wound strings. You don't really know. I mean, um, I think uh, you know, I've got some really good input on the the impossibility of steel wire itself stretching um, because if it, it either stretches um, and breaks or it doesn't stretch, if you get what I mean. It reaches a, a can't remember the word, an adaptability or something point. And I, I get that. I think that's a good. I believe that. I believe. I'm convinced by the science behind that. Um, but having said all of that. Uh, there is still a lot of slack stored wherever you like to call it somewhere you know as it not pulled tightly on there maybe there's a bit um, you know on the post or whatever there's still enough tied up in the system as evidenced by the fact that I can still pull it out by doing this now where it don't really matter it's not really worth arguing where it comes from but it's evident that there is a lot there and and that if you don't get it all out now the, the main point, the only interesting point or an important point, is that it will continue to uh, kind of let itself out over the years. In fact, as much as a couple of years, 
uh, on its left of its own devices and you will still be going out of tune because it's like let's say you've got a hundred a hundred little moments of detuning stored up in your strings um, let's say you you know you bend uh, or say it's a thousand you know and you bend a couple of notes each time you gig or practice or whatever and you get you know a couple of big bends um, you know it might take you a long time to get through that thousand detunings you've got stored up in there Right, we're really close now to being in tune. We're being stable in tune. And so what have we got? Well, we've got a beautiful low action. What I think is slightly high bar. And I can see the um, bridge rocking, which is cool. I like that. Everything's working well. Bends. Okay, we're almost free of that one final last problematic note up there. We got very close to it, um, but we are actually currently riding at one millimeter, which is a manically low, and we're sub one millimeter there. So that's actually too low for a guitar like this, although it would sound fan or feel fantastic to play, which it clearly does. Um, I'm going to crank it up just that little bit more to go where we aimed to go in the first place um, and not put the, you know there's a counterproductive thing in going below that if you go below what you're doing is reintroducing a you know potential buzz um, you know we know we had the problem with the 17th fret I think I might be saying 18th all the way through the first bit of the video um, I can't remember which I called it but it was one of them and um, anyway we know that it caused a problem because it was low sure it's at the 1.5 which it isn't quite yet we'll go for 1.5 on the low and 1 point 1 point two ish on the high fret okay there's our 1.5 and that's very low so let's let's help this up a tiny bit much as I love the low crazy low action we'll go up a tiny fraction hey it rhymes a couple more Last pulls. Hardly any, no detuning there at all. Tiny bit there. None there. Expect these to be higher because we just raised that. there but funnily enough looking at this now now actually I'm uh, what's interesting is looking at this shows a very slight inconsistency in um, first fret action heights actually nothing too much to bother me to, to work to make it worth digging into with the files to be honest the G is a 
tiny fraction high. Oh God, I'm tempted, I've got to do it. The G is a tiny fraction high. Um, and it's just gives, you know, it shows you what you get with these um, things that you buy from somewhere. You know, they are not, they're not a trillion percent precise. Simple as that. Um, so I'm going to just take this one down a fraction because I'm a perfectionist. And also be very careful watching out for the uh, headstock as well. We don't want to scrape the headstock as we do this. Almost there. But you know, it's, what's nice is that to do it this way round with this um, adjustable nut is is actually so much better than spending a long time cutting down in bone. Now this is making some dark stuff inside of here. That's fine. It's, it, that's now on the mark. Don't mind. It's, it's just um, I don't know, leftover stuff. It would be like a, it'd just be like a lubricant, I suppose. Um, but you'll, you'll see it's just got a slight darkening inside the slot. There we are. Actually, this is a this is a beautiful action now, and it's staying in tune. But I guess my only complaint that would be, and I don't know these things, but that feels a bit high up for me. So personally, I would I would probably want a, a softer spring to be down there somewhere. But again, that's one of those things you can you can shop around and find alternatives. Um, it's it's in nice and firm at the end. Uh, I think what I will do right now is put back in the. No, I'll leave this. I don't mind the end button being in because I pad around that, um, but I'll leave this this back in the strap button off and I'll I'll put it back in the package with a new felt to go with it. Um, and we'll also leave this off because there's no real need for it to be on there. But I will need a small package that I haven't already cut to pieces, which I already have. Oh, just to somewhere to put them safe. So this is a. Uh, this is going back with the guitar. Anyhow, as, as will this. So there we have it. Job done. Um, I suppose the explanation of this it gives you a bit of an idea of, hopefully gives you a sort of idea of what to watch out for when you're using a, 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 a slightly asymmetrical, non-original, uh, non a Chinese-made, whatchamacallit, that thing, trying to work. Um, you know, you're kind of, you, you've got to think about, I suppose, I mean, this is the first one I've done of the Chinese ilk. You, I, I guess you've got to think about the, the, what's critical here. You know, yes, you need these to be, oh, this one's moved off the line. You want those to be in a straight line um, as possible, as it can be. Um, but your critical thing is, is what is the geometry of this doing so you need so for example you need this to line up as close as you can um, but if this thing has a slightly wonky geometry there's no point getting this to a sort of perfect visual position and slamming that down because you you'll end up with a, a sort of twist in in pursuit of a visual uh, a visual thing uh, an aesthetic i guess also. <coughs> right what we've got is and uh, that's probably spare too we've got some bits in here we got the cover let's just check we've got tens on there which is a little bit heavier i think than what it came with i could be wrong um let's just check the current relief and that's good it feels good to play um well, so one little thing we're going to put the Put this back on, just for a cover, and um, the final thing I want to do is raise up, raise up the uh, pickup because it's currently set low because we wanted it out of the way. So, bring it up. Okay. The interesting thing anyway about this bridge I just noticed really is how this pickup is a bit off the mark um, for this bridge anyway. 
and there's nothing you can do about it. That's, as I say, that's given by the, the post on the bridge. But it does keep the uh, string out of line on this one. Um, it looks like these two are the same spacing, and you'd probably want a narrower spacing pick up for the neck on this, to be technically correct. Um, there probably is a bit of sideways movement, but you're still, even if you bump it sideways with, I don't know, a bit of foam or a, even a bit of heavy handedness, you have to prop it in a, in a different direction. That probably has to be done down the bottom somewhere. Um, even if you move it, you're still going to have the E strings inside of the, the screws or the poles, but it's kind of it's, it's where you're at, and there's not much to do about that. Now the, uh, I'm looking for another one of those. One last thing to note on this is that actually this action is fine and you don't really need to go, you can't go any lower on it, so at uh, so the first fret I should say. I should say. So uh, if you do any adjustment on it, really what you'll probably only do is lift it up slightly if you have a preference, but I've set it for the low action as a default. Um, so, so having it adjustable for you isn't its priority. The, the, the reason why I, I recommend it as a, a useful thing to do is because it, it's tusk, therefore it's kind of almost permanently lubricated, so they say. Um, let me just do something here. This isn't going to be very handy. It's permanently lubricated. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just, it's going to make working with a, Tremolo going to work much, much better. Now, for some reason, this isn't even connecting up with this one. I can't see why. Sorry a second. That's off the mark. That's because this one is actually broken under here. It's, uh, it doesn't even fit into the... It's, it's Like quite often you find, it's, dig, it's dug a little hole and broken its way through the wood. So, it's not... It's not very good. Let's just take that one out. I know it's weak. It's It's gone through the kind of side of the wood, if you know what I mean. Um, so I'll go with the two that have got a bite. That's something I noticed when I took it off in the first place. It's not critical. You only really need one of these to hold the thing on. <sighs> what it means is this third one's just going to be cosmetic because it's really hanging in there. As you can see, it just spins in really and doesn't do much. Okay, there we have it. And so we've got a few bits to send back. I'll try and find a bag now for all of these. Plus, uh, we have one of these. Uh, where have I put it? Now that's mine. That's my regular one. Let's put this one. This which I. There's the little um, hex key. Mm. And that's your lot. So I will see you later. Thank you for watching this. Hope you found it useful. There you go. Uh, Washburn HB30 with <coughs> Chinese tremolo. And you'll see when you come when you look underneath here, this at this point here isn't touching the wood at all. The only point of contact is the screw. Uh, underneath the spring there's a pad. There's a pad underneath here. There's a screw directly behind it. But So after the pad there and the screw there, it's all free floating to the edge of the thing here. Um, and, and even that, even the mechanics of this, it's not... How do I put this? Um, even this isn't completely level with the back of the guitar so you can see there's actually a little gap on this side here for it to for it to work in a straight line or in a, an untwisted straight line so there you go now I'm hearing a tiny tweak and we have it's not there it's up here okay we have the very slightest sounding Things, but I don't know whether that's the spring. I think that's the spring, to be honest. Or is it? Is it coming off the bridge? It's 
hard to tell. I think, just before I go, I think that's the, the maybe the bridge on extreme bends. See what happens. Let's try it right low down. E in tune. B slightly sharp. Only slightly. G fraction sharp. D on. A. A bit flat that was. E a fraction sharp. So there's a point at which get a little bit of creaking. Well, that's, it, it, it vibrates or it makes a noise here. It's really difficult isn't it because you can't tell whether it's the spring or the, uh, the arm. It's definitely Causing something to creak. See, this may be the limits of these little um, things. The fact they're rocking up to a point is really good, but it may be that it reaches. I think what's happening is it's reaching the limits of its rock. So, what you get is. It's gone, now it's gone high, sharp. Giving it a real wrench backwards. Hmm. Okay, well, given this, what I might still do then is drill out my replacement bridge that we had planned. Um, which is no big deal for this. We have this replacement um, which will, which needs a little bit um, of drilling out to get these uh, holes to match up. Um, and then what we can do is we can put that on and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll make sure. So this will go on a little bit longer for a minute but what I need to do is get the right drill bit. And I need to do it on the, stay there, on the pillar drill which will be a bit out of shot and annoying. So what do we reckon we've got here? Well, I reckon we're, we're on a six to begin with. So let's go, 6.5 is over, 6.5 is over. Seven will be too big, I reckon. But then we can take this one off and check. So, here we go. Okay, it's a pity, um, I hope that it would not get to that point but what I'm hearing is I'm hoping by the way it's it's the bridge and not the um, not the actual tremolo causing the creaking. I suspect it's the bridge or the saddles, the little peaks on the saddles. We had some more dummy test what sets that we could try out. Springs. 
No, I haven't got any spare ones, unfortunately. So what I'll just do is I'll get this one off, and I'm just going to compare, um, going to compare the holes, size, um, and the positioning to see how far off we are. Um, Do this over the top like this, and that's close. There's quite a bit of movement possible. It's close, but it's um, it's probably we need a bit more. So I think I think a seven is going to be better. So let's have a look. This one is 6.5. Um, let's go 6.5 first on the pillar drill. This is what the pillar drill is very good for. Sorry, you can't see that. But so this is kind of committing this um, bridge now to being used. But there's no point having keeping the original bridge if it's going to creak when you use it. Um, so I thought we might get away with it, the amount of inherent rocking that's going on, but it looks like not. Okay, so let's get this raised up. Are we right on the hole? We're right on the hole. Very good. Very good. Okay, so stand back. tightened up as you go further down so um, I'm looking at this I think I'm going to go one higher on this as well uh, well no tell you what let's do the sensible thing let's try it first where it's at before we go any further. So it's not too far off the mark, because it's different dimension, don't forget, in terms of its height and so on, uh, to the other one. So let's, we might not have to do hardly, we may have to do hardly any adjustment anyway, which means it may just be perfect at that size. Yeah, it's a little bit high. Let's put it under a bit of load, have a look at how it adjusts, if at all. And if not, we'll go a little bit higher size on the drill, on the post hole. But that's, um, that's just making it work with the pre-existing posts. Because obviously, of all the things to do, moving those posts is a, a big deal. Not something you want to end up be doing. Okay, so before we go any further, it's kind of important now to check, can I get any decent adjustment out of this without it tightening up beyond... Yeah, see, that's now, that now becomes tight at that point, and that's too high down there. So I think we realistically need to give it a bit more wiggle rim, which means going with the one size bigger drill out. It's only a half a millimetre size difference, but... But there you go. Sorry about this. I thought we'd finished, but we were kind of lining up to check. If you remember, I said 
and if it works it works and if it doesn't it doesn't so let's go with the seven switch that out Chuck, but it still works. I'm very pleased with it. Okay, here we have it. Let's do it. That one, that one was a bit of a handful. So one needs to. Um, Hold this, clamp this in place, because that got that bit in a little bit too far for my liking. Spare bolts. Let's just tighten this up. Right, so I'm going to need to make a, a, a restraining thing for this a minute. Um, so it's going to take a, a few minutes just to stop the uh, stop things spinning because it's not a good one to hold. I don't have a little vice, unfortunately, to do the job, so I'm going to have to restrain it with a little thing made from timbers. So, see you in a minute. Well, I should have done it in the vice, which is what I did afterwards anyway, and it works much better that way, handheld. I should, I've always done it handheld. I, for some reason, I thought I'd use the, sorry, handheld drill. I thought I'd use the pillar, um, because I didn't think I was taking much out, and, I, and the first one, it went through without grabbing the metal but anyway I should have used a vice and the, the pillar but anyway so I put it on hold for now because I've ordered another one I've got um, a bridge now with five of the six rollers I'm going to go hunting for the other roller just because I'm bloody minded um, it may well be lost down the back of the wherever but I'm going to go after it with my magnetic doofer and um, uh, and I'll come back when it's time to put the new bridge on so small interlude worst comes to worst it will be We'll have it, a new one arriving on Monday or Tuesday and we'll fit, we'll drill that out and fit that. But meantime, I'm going to go on a hunt, so see you later. Holy cow, <laughs> I found it by eye. That's just, <laughs> okay. I'll, uh, heavens above, I've literally, literally found it. <laughs> That's got to be one in a million in this shed. Oh my God. Right, I didn't even use the magnet. I found the little bar first and then saw the thing second. Wow, well, let's, so we have to go back and carry on. Blimey, that's changed all of that around. All right, let's bring this back. Set it up again. I was a bit surprised actually how fast this thing spat its bits and pieces off. Um, that's, I hope they don't sort of throw themselves off in the future quite so easily but I can't believe it. I mean I bought another one anyway and that doesn't bother me because you can never have too many roller bridges for this sort of work. Um, let's turn you this way. <laughs> So, uh, well, that means Dave's going to get a surprise because he's going to get this earlier than expected, which is brilliant. So, over the top, hand under. Now, I'm going to be interesting right now to see that this plays better and see whether or not we get any creaking, in which case it, we can see that it wasn't coming from the bridge, which uh, was, wouldn't be so great. I think... It's probably where it was coming from, but let's get this underneath the thing, over the thing, and under the thing, where I've chopped it off. Thank you. That's not quite right, but hey. Mm -hmm. That's just so unlikely to find that. Um, Anyway, we'll also get to see now whether the seven seven millimeter drill hole helps the business of 
uh, adjusting it to the action we want. It should do. That's the, that's the plan. Wow. So just um, yeah, if you do take roller bridges off, there's nothing holding these things on other than who knows. Actually, I don't really know what it is. Okay, let's have a feel. So yeah, what you get the feeling of is this bridge is by definition wider than this arrangement down here. So you kind of, this always seems to come in a little bit, even if you line these things up over their respective, what do you call it? Right, now let's um, adjust it, thank you, let's adjust it down to our chosen action, which isn't this I have to say. There's a lot of room now, so we've got plenty of adjustment space. Tuna back. Tuna back. Yeah, that's much better. It rocks as well, but the last little bit's taken up by the rollers. Okay. Some of the uh, Fender style Fender bridges, they're like the Mustangs, isn't it? And the Jaguar, designed to rock for the tremolo action, which is really good. Okay, huh. right, we're there. Sorry about that little di diversion. Um, Dave, you'll be surprised to know you're, you'll get this back earlier. This isn't in place quite right. It's got to pop down, thank you. That's fine. We're we'll tuning it up um, and we'll get it ready to go. And uh, there we are. After all of that, hey, hey done. HB 30 washburn, tremolo added, um, tusk nut added. Roller bridge drilled out and added after a bit of commotion. Thanks for sticking with it. Sorry about that last little bit. I don't know, uh, can't quite believe I actually found the missing bit. Yes.